Okay, class 13, we're gonna be doing some standing side headlock defense. Also gonna be taking a look back at the mount position. And we're gonna um, look at some, uh, like an arm bar that we learned when we were escaping head, side headlock on the ground, okay? Uh, so we'll look at that, but <clears throat> that will be kind of a come back up, but from a different situation with our takedown, right? And then we're also gonna be hip escaping from the mount, right? So this class we hip escape, next class, we need elbow escape, right? Which is also a variation of a hip escape, but we'll talk about the differences when we, when we do that <clears throat> in the next class, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with the warm up. We're gonna uh, do some, uh, some movement for our escape and then also some neck mobility uh, and exercises. Just wanna show everyone that can help you um, you know, as you do headlocks, like even, even though, you know, you might be doing a bunch of black belts together in my instance recently, you know, we were just really pulling each other's heads for two and a half hours and stuff. And the next day it was like, oh man, my neck and shoulders really sore from that two hours of trying to get my head pulled off. Right? So we want to do some exercises to, to strengthen that, uh, that part of our body, the, our traps and, and, and our, uh, our neck and just maintain our mobility, okay? So let's get started with hip escapes, Micah. Uh, so just lay down here, hip escapes going backwards all the way to this flat mat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, invert that heel, drive, nice, hips out, good. Mm -hmm. Nice, good, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and get up and, uh, yeah, well, let's turn around, turn around. Yeah, good, let's do this. No, but, so let's do this, on your back. <clears throat> Let's do the shoulder walk and hands push down and hip escape about the third or fourth shoulder walk, right? So start here like you're in high mount. Shoulder walk, push down and hip out. Good. Get those feet where they need to be while you're pushing down, pushing down, hipping out. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Turn back around. We'll, we'll do the whole get up in base segment in a second. That'll be fine. Okay. Now, uh, build your frame right there. Yeah. So here we're building a frame. Uh, with uh, two hands on one shin, right? He's just putting his hands like this on my far shin. Turns on his side, get your feet where they need to be organized, this heel's out, driving, inverting the heel there, and hip escape out. Boom, okay, good, frame, right? There you go, frame, okay? I just wanna always be sure he has that next leg to frame on, okay? So you could start under the arms and make him have to shoulder walk out and then build a frame on one side and hip escape. It's another way we could do it. We have a, a lot of different hip escape drills and we've even seen them in some of the previous classes because now we're doing them for technique, right? So we don't, uh, you know, we want this to be a fundamental movement for you, uh, but we also want it to, uh, you know, not be the first time you've ever seen or heard about it, the, te the time that we are gonna teach you the technique because we wanna show it to you that day as well, right? But we've done some hip escapes in, in previous classes. Okay, so <clears throat> let's um, now we'll uh, take a look at a, a drill we work with getting up in base. Okay, so we have a seat, please. Okay, nice, nice. All right, so um, what I want you to do here, this is uh, the, you know, you get up in a, with a technical stand up from here. Go ahead and do that real quick. Right, uh huh, good. Back down, please. Now go to the seated position with, with here, right? So if you just lean forward, just like when we're standing, right? Yeah, you rounded your spine and it helped even more, okay? But, you know, especially if somebody's on their knees, right? Because somebody does jujitsu, would be fighting you on their, their knees for some reason, right? But, you know, that you lean forward. Okay, put your hands behind you. It's like a crab crawl position, okay? Lift up slightly, yes. And if I push, it's the opposite, good. And that's the weight distribution on the seated base, okay? So seated base could be in the middle, or it could be either side. So we can get up a technical stand up. We need to not get pushed over from the seated base in the middle. So today we'll be uh, seated base in the middle. If somebody, so just be here. If somebody is gonna circle around, you're gonna almost like a back fall and follow me. So I'm gonna go this way. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I want you to do. Um, I'm gonna do that and I want you to come up into seated base on your dominant side. I want you to get up with the technical stand up. Very nice, very nice, huge. Okay. I'm gonna go this way now. 
Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, that's good. Right down. Now, I'm going to go this side. I want you to follow. Go back to seated base in the middle. I'm going to come back to here. Same thing. But then I want you to be seated base on your dominant side for a technical stand up. After you get up in base, I want to check your base. Okay? So we'll go here and go back. Technical stand up. Base. Oops, forward. Yeah, just the shift of your weight to the balls of your feet. Good. If I start going here, hips back, then you can point that knee as well. See, that's helpful. Okay, that's our tug of war. All right, so single collar grab. We'll see that in some, you know, that's a, a great uh, thing to learn to defend. And we'll see it in some of the later classes in the program. Can I put my knee or put my toes too, or just my knee? Well, it's, think about it, it's, it's predominantly about your hips facing forward, right? But, you know, it's it sometimes easier. Um, so here, I can face my hips forward, but my knee be out this way because I want to maintain balance in this way, right? Right. But here, what I'm doing is I'm pointing that knee there, and that gives me a little more room to go back with my hips if I need it, and without being off balance, without losing, over committing. Okay. But good question. Let's go back down. This I'm gonna come this way and then back. Okay. And then when we get back to here, you're on your dominant side. Technical stand up. Right, and thing two, baby step, inches. Yes, it's not, okay, so here's the thing, our base, sometimes it is a, it feels like a, a fortification, right? It is just like a, a, a walled fortress, you can't get in, right? But, you know, sometimes it's very also, and it needs to always be mobile. We, we can't be so commit like so much of a fortification that we can't move also, right? So just think kind of about that idea, you know, like think of it as more like armored siege equipment, right? Like so if, it, if you're gonna come in on a fortification, somebody else, right? You're gonna ram their gates open, right? Your, your ram is gonna have all kinds of defenses around it, right? They, they would go as far as to cover them with um, animal skins that were saturated with water. So when they dumped uh, oil or, or to set on fire with, with uh, like flaming arrows or any of that, it's not gonna catch, right? So just, you know, tactics like that, right? But just think that battering ram is mobile, but it's armored, right? It's in its own impenetrable fortress, right? And gets into the, the walled fortress. So just a, a little metaphor. Um, let's do the last uh, review here um, and then something where we take a, a, another technique we've learned. But everything we were covering in technical stand-up and teeter-totter drill, we've seen in other classes, okay? So go ahead and have a seat again, okay? What I want here is um, <clears throat> we're gonna, uh, so get on your dominant side, whatever hand behind you you want, okay? Kind of shift your hips a little bit, good. Okay. Now, as I go to come in, right, it's going to be your bottom foot is going to intercept my knee, right? I want you to kick this right above the knee and push me, push back as you retreat for base. Okay. And just do from a single step here. Boom. Right. And see, just, yeah, push with it. Yes. Good. And you see how that you had that swing. You don't want your arms so far behind you that you can't have that swing of your hips. Just like when we were checking your base a second ago from the middle, okay? So here, when I step in, boom, good. All right, back down. Okay, now, middle. We're gonna go teeter-totter. You're gonna come up seated on your dominant side. You're gonna kick, get up in base. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right? Hey, what? It gets harder, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, lean into the balls of your feet. Good. 
Okay. Um, yeah, just creating space with that kid. Boom, stopping me from coming in. Um, we do this a lot, but have a seat right where you're at. We do this with a lot of the drills. Um, have a seat on one side. Okay, get that foot kind of, see how it's against your foot? We don't want that because then you might be harder to kick. You might get stuck or something, All right? So I think this will be, from walking, I'm gonna try to start with the foot that I think I will arrive with this one coming forward, okay? Yes, that was great, okay? And it's gonna, you know, that sort of application. Like here, you kind of see, you understand, look at this distance. You understand that two hands distance idea. Well, when I step into that, switching my feet, that's my approach, that's your response, okay? And just, just feel that distribution of weight, just be, yeah, drive forward into your foot, right? And then you can retreat off that. And as you do, you, you just like you're doing, you're pushing off and it makes me go here, or it makes me bend over, right? So I teach fighters a lot. When they, because I again, I've had fighters use this after getting knocked down, right? To, teach, to come up with an uppercut, right? Because like if you use a, a get up in base and somebody is was trying to come down on you, they're bent over, you know, nose before toes, and they're susceptible to an uppercut. We don't do uppercuts in this class, but it is an option, okay? So, um, all right, uh, now, stand up real quick. And, and just kind of so this is going to be the idea like I'm going to put weight on you as you are getting up but you did everything correctly let's say right we're not going to do all the teeter-totter and all that right but I'm going to put weight on you as you go to get up and it could be in the context of all the stuff we just done I just want to see you know from hey just get up in a normal base technical stand up show me that and as you go to do that I'm going to I'm going to kind of try and like front headlock you because I'm like, oh, he's, get, he's, getting, he's getting away. You don't want him to stand up. I want him to stay on the ground. I'm the one, you know, whatever. And I just kind of grab at you. Okay. That can jam people up and get them actually hurting their neck. Okay? So, um, and, and let's actually, let's sidebar and do some of our neck mobility exercises we, we talked about earlier, okay? So this is where we're going to uh, start getting into the headlock defense, okay? So a couple of good ones here. Uh, and we'll just turn this way, is moving our head up and down, okay? So there. All right, all of that other stuff we just did, so it's just fundamental movements. Getting up in base, like people do that with a kettlebell, talk, call it a Turkish get up, you know? Let's go side to side now. Yes. Okay, we're not gonna do a big circle, but let's do a little roll. Other direction. A great product for strengthening your neck is the Iron Neck. I have one and it, and it helped uh, with my neck range of motion. And some had a shoulder injury and it helped rehab that and strengthen kind of the last little part of that. And I have no pain with that now for the first time in almost two years, right? And the big fi finishing touch was getting that neck strength back because just how your neck ties into your shoulders, okay? But a great one, it's like one of the most beneficial ones, I think, for fighters getting punched, boxers of any kind, like you're getting hit in the face, or headlock, jiu-jitsu people, is protraction and retraction. Okay, so I'm extending my neck, becoming a long neck, right? And then here, tuck my chin. So in and out. Okay. Let's just lightly pull our head down. Thumbs under our chin, look to the ceiling. Ear to shoulder. It's just the weight of my arm, you know? And then if you wanna to add to the stretch, think about opening your palm or your other arm and extending down with that. It lengthens, okay? Go to the other side, same thing. Start small and then you can, you can extend. And we're breathing. Okay, now let's look to the side. 
and take that arm of the side you're looking on and go here. Go to the other side. Okay, good. Now, um, you know, want to do just a couple of things with the shoulders. I'll mention um, a couple more uh, that we're not going to do is like I'm pushing my head into my hand and my hand into my head, both. So I can do that to each side, you know, an asymmetric hold here on my forehead and on the back. And those are really, really great ones as well. And why I like the iron neck is because when you just do mobility in the iron neck and you aren't moving your head, that's the sort of strength that you're getting from that, okay? So, but it, you get on the resistance band with the, with the helmet. So, um, now uh, let's do a couple of things with the shoulders. So just here, I want you to put your thumbs together. I want to just shrug. Right, I'll do, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30. Okay, now let's go up here, thumbs together at the top, and we'll shrug. You call these ceiling punches. I'll even do that with like an overhead press or a dumbbell at the fitness center for, for strength, okay? But, um, you know, and then too, same thing we talked about when we're rolling our shoulders with our, or rolling our neck. Not a big circle sometimes, I'll do that, but it's more of a stretch. So we're kind of doing stretch and mobility both. But here, just the small circles forward. Not big circles. I'm not trying to to move the, uh, the shoulder and the joint and backwards, just small circles, trying to get the blood flowing. And then we'll kind of open and close our chest and between our shoulder blades. So I'm pinching in the back like that, and then I'm rounding my spine in the full, in the front there when I come forward. Spinal waves, some people call these. So I'm sort of concave with my chest here, like when we hold side mount, right? And then here, rounding my spine, curving my spine. All right, so that's just like now, okay. Whew, got everything warmed up because we're about to do some headlock stuff, okay? Um, the last thing, I'm gonna start kind of adding in a disc into the headlock. Uh, so let's go over this, have a seat here. Um, get in your uh, base on the side here, okay? Now, I'm gonna come in, I want you to start standing up, and here. Oh yeah, right? So what we have to do here is reposture, okay? We saw this in the last sequence of classes. We, we've seen the reposture since we were doing you know, back control, like finishing up with the back control stuff, and when we were also doing the guillotine defenses, right? Because it's kind of a, one of our standing guillotine defenses. This though, we're applying it from getting up in base, okay? So when I come in, I'm just, I'm not gonna guillotine you, I'm just gonna put weight on your back. So you're probably gonna feel trapped here, okay? So on this one, I want you to drop your knee when you feel trapped. That's, so it's like, well, okay, yeah, yeah, I outweigh you 40 pounds probably, okay? M maybe, maybe 50. So you got my weight, your weight plus, you know, 50 pounds, bearing down on your back, your neck, right? That's why I got this warmed up first, okay? So when that starts happening, you reposture. Anytime you're stuck here, watch how I get my posture back, boom, okay? So, you ready to get up in base, right? Go ahead. Here, but keep your hand down. Keep your head down. Yes. Okay. Now, so uh, what? Go ahead and drop your knee down and reposture. Boom. Okay, and drop that knee down. So watch what I. I'll go once. You stand up. Okay. Here, I retract. Here, you put weight on my back. Look, I'm gonna go here. In that in that uh, position, okay. You'll feel which way to go, and just get the knee, the proper knee down, and shoot it between the legs. You, if I'm bent over, you go in between my feet. You're under my center. 
okay? So here, get up, here, drop, yes, good, all right? Keep your, move your arm up there. Yeah, keep your arm like here, or here, or slide it from here to here. We wanna have that when we come around to establish our rear clinch, okay? Good. Right now it's dropping way back, just like we checked when we were covering that portion of base. Okay, stand up. Good. Okay. So I think I think it was last class we saw the reposture when I put weight on your back like that, but you're standing up. Right? So get in a side clinch. Like that. And just you don't have to drop your knee, but reposture. Oh. You slip through. We've been building them, right, for several classes. So now we see that we can use it, you know, okay, while well, I was getting up, so, you know, might not make sense to drop my knee down if we're both already standing. But in that context of with our, our technical stand-up, it makes a lot of sense, okay? So that's something to, you know, kind of add to your list and a little bit of a review on our technical stand-up, getting up in base, which is one of our fundamental techniques that we teach in this class, all right? Now, um, <clears throat> we've got one more si uh, side headlock defense to cover, okay? This is great for self-defense. It is a defense against strikes. A lot of times it's taught incorrectly. It's not, the, the other method doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist in the context that we're gonna talk about it today, all right? So a lot of times people will show grabbing a hand here. See what I've done is I went through and I grabbed his wrist. The thing is though, he can just punch down and be heavy, right? And like when somebody does that in bases, like they're getting their wrist free. Okay, now it, it is, it is it, there is some um, viability there, right? I, I don't wanna fully detract from it. Um, you know, I see it used in MMA against the wall. I see some context there, right? Um, but uh, <clears throat> again, you can just punch straight down out of it, okay? They might be stronger than whatever, but still, it's not a super secure grip. So we don't want to do that with this technique. That'll be like, I, I, you know, I watched somebody teaching this. It was a, you know, a black belt the other day. It was, um, you know, just in a, in a bigger school, several people at the class, just a video, and they're teaching the same technique, and we're showing it that way. You know, it, but, you know, I never knew that for a long time, that that was just how you could get out of that. Once you know that, it changes. Okay, so here, you know, anytime you're starting to grab at my head, I wanna connect my hip, okay? Now from here, when you start, um, let's just find our base here, okay? So you, if you're pulling my head down, okay? Right, I'm gonna connect my hip and open my shoulder to obtain posture, right? And that, so I just had to have to match with my shoulder coming in here, right? And I want to maintain posture. I want to find my base there, okay? So against the side headlock. Now, from here, he may start trying to hit when I do a good job, right? So I want to collect the arm and be here, okay? I don't have to squeeze super hard, right? I just have to cup around right at the elbow and hold. Connect here, right? And then I can also address things going on with this hand. So now that he let go, he doesn't have his hands together anymore. So from this, it, again, it's the context of against strikes. Okay, now <clears throat> try and still headlock me though. Okay, I'm gonna grab here. It is thumb and wrist. I'm gonna step back into base. Now, what I wanna do here is when I slip, try and go ahead and punch out. I've gotta worry about that there as well, okay? So, um, let's just start from here, okay? So I'm, I'm posturing, defending, you go to hit here. I collect that arm like there, like I could here, but I'm pinning it there. I grab the wrist and I open up and I get in my uh, nice defensive posture here with my four point base, okay? Now, what I wanna do here is this, I um, um, slip my head out, I'm gonna turn his arm. Right? 
try and punch out a bat. It's hard. Oh, yeah. And I just, I'm gonna, gonna get you up on your tippy toes with it, walk you to the door, break your arm, whatever. Okay, now when we're doing this, and this goes for all submissions, I'm gonna try and teach you this, it's a weird, weird thing to think about. Hey, when I'm ripping your arm off your body there, just stay relaxed. But here's the thing, guys. It's like on, uh, we talk about this on the Americana, which I think is class number two. Um, you can uh, sometimes, when you go to straighten out of it, and they're doing a really good job, they're doing the Americana the way we teach it, right? Uh, here's what happens. It, um, it makes it tighter. Ah, it comes on quick. It's because you're, you're already tensed up, right? And you go to try and escape, you go to try and straighten your arm, and oh, it comes on quicker. So usually adding tension to the, uh, you know, when you're in a submission and you're trying to get out and it's late already like that, it's not the way to get out, okay? But just staying relaxed in all bad situations. That's one of the benefits and values of jujitsu, okay? So let's do this side headlock defense. Okay, um, get in the side clinch here. Okay, and I'm, I'm grabbing here, so that's why you, you really need to focus on connecting that hip. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm trying to pull you down, keep your posture, hip forward, shoulder back. Okay, nice, there you go. That's That feels decent. Okay, now here, I'm gonna start hitting you. Catch that arm, collect it with this one. See, yeah, I got you already. Here, catch it, boom, boom. There you go, now, pin it. And pass it good now just hold it and again you don't have to hold it super hard let's let's now that now this hands free just don't even, you don't have to do anything with it keep your base a little more um i think the hip and shoulders like the, how they oppose each other so if um if this hip is pushing forward this shoulder is going back oh yes see it like counterbalances i'm trying to pull you down at this diagonal angle so you need to keep posture on that line, right here. And here in a second, go ahead and um, grab my wrist there. And yes, with that grip, okay? Now, um, here's what I want you to do, and you're gonna twist it in, uh, inward, so that way, as you, as you do this, but step back into four point base, open your chest, right foot is gonna step, or left foot is gonna step back. Go back, go back. So. Um, left foot step back. Boom. Yes. See. Now keep your posture. Keep your posture. Inflate your chest. Yes. Right. That off balance me. Now, as you clear your head, twist that arm behind my back. Yes. Right. There you go. So I come up on my toes because it's working. Okay. Let's do this on the other side. Okay. Get the side clinch. Find base against the headlock. Yes. It's that that opposing forces. Right, so if this hip's going forward, this shoulder's going back, and that keeps your head up, keeps me from pulling you down. We'll learn in a later class what happens if you get your head pulled down like that. Relax, like this. You may get pulled all the way to the floor. So that can happen. We've got our, our headlock escapes from the side control, one through four to deal with that, okay? Go ahead and find base, good. I'm gonna start hitting, collect the arm. Catch, yes, good, there, pin it, and just hold here. Shoulder back, hip forward, good. Now, see, you don't have to do, it's super hard to maintain. It's not like we're gonna hang out here. We're finding base because we need to practice this, okay? So now grab my wrist, right? Good, see grip there. Now step into four point base, step back here, okay? Good, now twist my arm behind my back as you clear your head, punching down and turning it. Yes, good. Now here, so like, see how you're kinda that, take that and grab my collar. Yes, there you go, okay? If they have long hair, you can grab their hair, right? Um, it just depends on the context. There's lots of things that we could do, little stress tests on that, right? But this is what the stress test for today. Hey, somebody's trying to hit you and pull your head down at the same time. Here's how we defend against that. Here's how we keep our base. That's number one. And then here's some technique. Just like today, you know, it's class 13. We've seen all this, you know, get up in base, or, you know, it's like, like we're confused or should I get up in base at the end of the warm up? And it's like, well, yeah, but we're gonna just go ahead and turn around with we'll this because we're doing that as a big review this class, right? Same thing um, with many of the techniques, headlock defense, overarching thing. Headlock defense from the side, overarching thing.
right? Because it could be from the side, the front, standing, on the ground. It's so, so diverse of a topic, okay? So we look at little micro studies. And then by the time we go all the way through, well, this is like a master class of the headline escape, right? So um, that's that. Um, you know, just need to keep, you always have our base. So we'll move on uh, next to the takedown uh, and then get into our uh, attack. And okay, so on this headlock defense uh, theme, uh, if we're able to find and maintain base uh, against someone trying to just pull our head down, right? Which happens in all sorts of instances, like a really good wrestler is gonna stand right in front of you and try and pull your head down, try and snap you down, right? Um, we've seen that even on our guillotine defense class, okay? But um, with this, I'm you know going around your head trying to pull you down. It could be off of a overhand that you stepped in, they couldn't punch you with it, but then they turned it into a headlock. We've seen all sorts of instances, okay? But when you're able to find and maintain base, okay, get inside clinch. Okay, good. And this secret, my tricep here. Okay, nice. Here, all right. Then you bang hip forward, shoulder back. Yes. Okay, relax. Now, with this, he's just hugging my hip bone. He's connecting his hip in the back. That's what you do when you're being headlocked. Okay. Sometimes we see it's more like our knee, and sometimes um, we might not even have a hip connection. But that doesn't mean we don't have base. Okay. So, um, you know. Once you're able to find this base, okay, so um, I've got you in the side clinch here. This is under my arm. I'm good and connected, right? You start trying to pull my head here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm keeping this up, right? But also keeping this in. I don't want to, to be on the receiving end of headbutts. And this is where it can go. This can go into some of our takedowns right out the gate. Okay, so once I'm able to, uh, to do this against this headlock, and again, this is you know typically him trying to pull me downward, right, here, okay? So um, this may be here and I have the body lock, okay? Either way, we're gonna take this hand and do something else with it, okay? So whether he has here or whether you have the secret, when we, when we work the side clinch, we see this body lock, right? We see one hand with the C grip on the tricep, and then we see sometimes having to address this and maybe he's striking, okay? So yeah, we might need to collect like we saw earlier in this class. And I can turn that into a C grip, or I can turn it into painting it onto his arm. He might not just be kind of squeezing my head but not pulling it to the floor, right? It's just kind of, you know, those are the things we learn when to feel that, okay? So <clears throat> as he's um, trying to pull my head down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, have this posture, I'm gonna go right down behind his knee and that leg that's behind him where my hips connected is going to move. And he's almost because of what we're doing here, pull the head, right? It's almost like he's sitting some weight there. So you take him right down, okay? He just like falls in a hole, right? Now hold on to the headlock. Go ahead and hold on to the headlock. So here we've seen ways to deal with this. If we, get, if we take him down, right? We've seen ways that we can deal with him holding onto this, and we'll review one of those in a second, okay? So all I'm doing is, once I find that good posture, this is gonna be great for you because I'm a little taller than you, is you're hooking behind the knee here, right? And then going, okay? In, in Kodokan Judo, there are 40 throws in, in uh, groups of eight. Right? Um, and one of those 40 throws is this one, okay? It's not in the same context. They show it with the gi grips, you know, very traditional sort of judo kata. This is the self-defense variation, okay? So in judo, they call it uki, atoshi, floating drop. I drop down to one knee, you go to the floor, okay? So, um, you know, there, there's some other variants of, of throws like that where you drop down to one knee. This is the one we're working on today. Sometimes you drop to both knees, right? But um, what we're doing here is you're pulling them, you're behind their knee here, like this, okay? And they go down, and then we're eventually going down to both knees, but I want you to think about dropping down to, to one. If you go down the other immediately, that's fine, right? But we're, it's, it's, a, 
you know, I'm pulling you down. Watch one more time. Grab my head. All right, so here, right? So here you just have headlock. So let's say I have body lock. I'm, I'm finding posture here. I'm opening up. I sit you down, boom. All right, and look at this one. It's up. Give me a second, it's gonna come over. Okay, so again, I just kind of, boom. Okay, so here. All right, good. Find your base, shoulder back. Good, now hook under my leg. All right, now step that leg. Yes, yes, and I held on, good. <laughs> Find your base. Good, okay. Now, hook the leg. Step back. Cool. Nice. Remember how we were step like when we were defending the headlock against strikes? Mm -hmm. How we step back? It's very similar. So we're just dropping down when we do that. But we saw it like, okay, I'm defending against side headlock. I step back and you're in a four point base when you do that. So, like, look, I was in a four point base here, facing this way. Now I'm in one facing this way. Right? So it, it, it's kind of like that. Like, we talked about it in the previous class and you did a fantastic job today. Hey, after you stand up, get in a four point base. Yeah, if, if it has to be tug of war, we can make adjustments as long as we stay mobile. Okay? So um, now, let's do the takedown. This will be a review. I'm not going to, so I'll just kind of walk you through it. I'm going to hold on to your head. I want you to frame my face. And remember, I can be strong pulling everything in. But if you take my shoulders and my arms up, my shoulders become weak. Okay, and again, why? So you're gonna make me, while I'm squeezing, holding your head, you're gonna make my shoulders come into a weak position because my arms are gonna go up like that. When that happens, it makes my grip break. You know what? I just want you to fall back for arm bar. Just straight up arm bar, okay? So we're doing this from the, um, the uh, headlock defense, again, we saw this in the previous class when we were doing those headlock escapes uh, from side control, okay? So we're just reviewing that, but we're doing it after the takedown today, okay? So let's see, side headlock, find your, find your base, good, okay. Now, hook the leg, step back. Nice, I've got your head. So I want you to frame my face, step over to technical mount, right? Slide over, nice. Now, lean kind of up over my head into my neck. There you go. Okay, now, need my arm here. You already wrapped around it. Swing your left leg over my head before you fall back. You post the hand on the mat. Boom, and swing over. Boom. Nice, yes, you got it. Already, just, there's no slack there. Like, this, my, up, my shoulder is up like that, okay? So, let's see that again. Here, base, hook the leg, step back. Good. Step over. Lean forward, nice. Good, post on the mat. Good. When you post on the mat, post closer to my face. Okay, watch, just get inside, get in the headlock here, behind me, okay? And two, sometimes I will put this hand on here and this hand here because I'm transitioning them out. I'm not super worried about their legs, but this can prevent anything crazy happening. Okay, now step over. Boom, and this, yeah, you just let it go as you come over. And then you're like, perfect, that was perfect. I'm holding you down, lean up, up, forward into my neck and up, nice. That has some, makes you have to break. Now, do everything, but post this hand on the mat, like right where it's at. Just push down, yes, beautiful. Now, uh, transition, swing your head that way, over. Nice, no slack. Very good. Yeah. You said after the thing. Okay. Again, that's review. And we're doing mat and arm bar uh, from a different angle. Um, we'll look at that on the ground, uh, as well as our hip escape. Okay, so this is the mounted hip escape fundamentals. Right, this is, this is the main one we want all of the students to know. So uh, if you're doing the program, hip escape from out, this is it. We've seen bridge and roll. And next class, uh, or the UPA escape we also call it,
right? And next class, uh, we'll see knee elbow escape. And those are the three big mount escapes we teach, right? And you'll see that those types of escapes, those are how we get out of other bad situations as well. We hip escape out of a, a side control headlock. We saw that, okay? So that, that makes techniques easier for us to retain and remember and apply, right? Because there's not a bunch of them. We just use this fundamental movement in all these situations, right? We just need to kind of get a positional framework in our mind and then, okay, headlock defense, got to protect my neck, stuff like that, okay? So uh, let's go over hip escape fundamentals and um, we'll move on from, from, from there, okay? So <clears throat> Mike has got me a mount. Now, <clears throat> Here, what I want to do is get my um, elbows to the mat here and, and be sure that he's over my hips, okay? So ultimately, I'm going to move him downward and I'm going to move me away. But how I do that, I've got to get uh, a frame. I've got to form a connection with that frame. So I need to add some, some weight to him and I need to remove weight from me, okay? You can do this with a single hand in the middle, here, here. You can do it with both hands, okay? And you can do it to the sides. We're gonna focus on framing in the center, okay? And we're gonna go either hand or both hands, all right? I like one hand because this hand can still protect. I don't like just having to rely on um, this for strike defense. So don't, you know, uh, mistake that. Um, it's more just like parrying, stopping him from, from grabbing, pushing my face. You know, a lot of times somebody will push your face before they hit it with their other hand. So you go to push my face, right? And I'm here, I can, you know, deflect that. And then even use that as a part of my frame. Okay, so, but again, this is, I like this one hand protect, one hand connect, right? So here, I wanna turn my heel out I want to push him not straight backwards, but to the back corner. Here. He puts his hand on the mat. All right? A lot of times at this juncture, when you do a really good job, when you're showing it dynamically, they accidentally fall down because they don't have time to put their hand on the mat. Right? But I'm pushing this back corner. And now at this point, I'm hip escaping away. There he accidentally sit down. Okay, go ahead and come back up. All right? If they sit down, you come forward. And you just come up and you're, you know, inside their goal. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to bring our top knee in first and then our bottom. And then we're going to pull him down into our guard with posture control. Okay. So let's see this again. All right. Let's start, turn it from the side profile this time. Okay. So here. Boom. Right. This heel was facing out and... This is driving down here, okay? If he pinches his knees tight, I can kind of single shoulder walk out of this until I'm able to hip escape. And that's kind of the idea of adding stress. Top knee comes in first when I want guard here, boom. Okay, I got posture control, but both arms are on one side, right? So that's something that we've seen a little bit and it will be a, a theme that comes up, okay? If he gets this back over to the other side, I want to just keep his posture down. Posture down might look, you know, like a Valley Tudo guard. It might be in the center, off to the side. There's some different hand placements at play. Okay, so just some things to things to consider there. All right. Um, so one other little nuance here, right? And we'll go through this with you doing the technique is the timing thing. So getting the body positioning, okay, you're over my hips, and now when I push you back, you know, you're not over my hips anymore, like you're, you're off of them and they're free to escape. Then I'm pinching my knees around your legs, no big deal, you just shoulder walk out a little bit until you clear that hip line, then you can hip out. That's kind of adding stress to it, okay? Still works. You can also go knee elbow at that juncture, but still works with the hip escape, just backward hip escape. Timing on this though, will be when somebody's going to hit you, okay? Somebody goes to rear back to hit you is a great time to escape. It tells you when, like, okay? So their weight's over your hips. If they go to rear back, the weight's going back, you escape then. 
right? So, head facing the camera. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna it this way. Good. Okay. So, go ahead and make your frame. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Got got body positioning here in the center. Don't push me straight back. Push me to the back corner. All right. Just yeah. So whatever side you want. There you go. Good. And nice. Just stay in the center there. Now get your uh, you know get your base heel heel out here driving into this leg. Okay. Now I want your hips to shoot out that line. Boom. Okay. Top knee in first. Now let's get the other leg in for guard. Uh huh. Nice. Very good. Okay. See that again. Okay. Push back. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Top me in. Nice. Yeah, you got to get out a little further. Good. That's a little mild adjustment. They'll be coming in, you know. Here, yeah. Go create that strong frame. All right. And then this one's in. And turn on your side to remove your hook. Good. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Now, just facing the camera again. Okay. We'll go with the sing single frame this time. Okay. So whatever side you want is fine. Um, but, you know, um, this is just kind of here. But I go to rear back to strike. Okay. When I do that, I want you to push me to the side I'm rearing back to. So if I rear back this side, and that made me fall over. You know, if here, if I fall over, come up to your knees. Like, thread the needle, yes. And get up in base, yes. Good. Okay? This is you just do a good job. They don't always fall over. They might just really be holding on to you, trying to do things, okay? So, here, go ahead and push me back again. I didn't fall over. Go ahead and get the guard, okay? Rotate all the way to your other hip to help get your hooks out. Uh-huh, good, boom, boom. All right, you got posture control, head and arm. There you go, nice. Okay, so that's it. This is the basics. Again, you go both in the center, single, either one, and a great way to time this for self-defense, for this class, perfect. So I was trying to hit this. Right, those are the situations that we like to look at, okay? So that's our hip escape fundamentals for the class. Um, and uh, we'll take a look at the mounted arm bar next. Okay, uh, mounted arm bar fundamentals. This is the classic self-defense arm bar we teach everyone. It's the situation is somebody is trying to basically bench press you off, right? So like a lot of times, you know, we're right across the street from the college, we get football players, right? that type of person, trial class guy, trying class out, you know, hey, what's this jujitsu stuff? Um, and they're strong. And so they're gonna use what they have, they have strength. So this is like somebody trying to bench press you off, they're pushing you away, all right? So it's basic, we see with mount, ways to hold it, they push us to the side, they push up, etc. This is gonna be, they are uh, pushing us up off of them, okay? So I'm gonna go over uh, some details there. Uh, and, and then also how to um, transition to the arm bar, okay? So head facing the camera here. Okay, so one thing is, you know, here I'm just kind of holding a middle mount. I don't want, uh, you know, I might set my weight on his hips or be heavy there, controlling there at times, you know, to counter things he's doing, right? Or I might also, um, be up and most of the time I'm up where I'm kind of heavy on my knees that way if he raises his hips it, it doesn't affect me a whole right it, he's at the top of his bridge before I started feeling anything right so I don't you know have to uh, adjust and overcorrect and lose my balance like what we see with some of the escapes okay so um, with this I'm gonna have that kind of mount and um, what I like with this is somebody was trying to hip escape and uh, push me back and we round our spine. It makes it very heavy, turn sideways. Push here. We round our spine, okay? So that's if they're just trying to push back, right? And we saw in some of the early classes, we could go to low mount, and, and you know, we see ways to hold this mount in other classes, Americana, there's all sorts of great techniques from here that we already know, okay? 
Now with, uh, you know, let's say that's not working. I'm leaning forward. So you're like, well, I'm gonna try the shoulders, right? So, you know, go ahead and try and push the shoulders. I've got this rounded spine. What I wanna do is I wanna frame the arm I wanna arm bar. Okay, so if it's that arm here, if it's this arm here, okay? I'm not gonna frame both like that. It's whatever arm I wanna arm bar, I go over that one, okay? And I just frame up on the chest here, okay? So I have this kind of rounded spine. I'm gonna hop up, turn my head here, and take the arm. Okay, try and head face my camera. Okay, so he's pushing my chest. I got this rounded spine, right? He's pushing me up here. Like we see that sometimes we can pummel our chest back in, okay? But what I wanna see here is we're gonna frame right here on the chest, okay? I'm, that means I'm gonna armbar that arm, okay? The other one's gonna come under, right? I use that to help pop myself up. I redistribute my weight right here. My weight's in the middle. I'm gonna put my head over my left leg. As I do that, it makes my light leg, right leg light, rather, so I can step over. Here I base if I need to, okay? Now, I'm falling back here for my finish, okay? So, let's see yours, Mike. Here. <clears throat> Okay, here, practice that weight distribution. Don't be sitting on my hips, raise up into your knees. If I push you, round your spine and fold over. Yes, look at me when you do that. It rounded it even more. Yes, just like, yeah, just right down at me. That made you very heavy. Okay, good. Here, I'm trying to bench press you away. I don't like this, get up. You know, frame the one you want, good. Now go under the other arm. Hands on top of each other. Push down to stand up. Uh huh. Okay, now start switching your head that way and take the arm. So go back. Always arm, uh, leg over the head before you fall back. Okay, so go back down to the beginning. Find your base. Good. I don't like that. Frame the arm. All right, stand up. Kind of go back, hop up to both feet at the same time. Boom, nice, now go for it. Post his hand if you need to. There you go, nice, good. <clears throat> good, one more time. Okay, just start like coming down to smother. Just lean forward, yeah. I don't like that, so I'm pushing you off. Yeah, all right? And, because that's all I have, again, straight. Frame my arm. Good, underneath, right? Push all your weight down into that and stand up. Boom, switch your head that way. Post the hand on the mat, take the arm. Yes, good, wait a minute, take a second to get that control. I know it seems like extra, but you had so much more control because you were doing it, right? Because you took that second to post the hand on the mat, okay, cool. Because here's the thing, I'm laying there, like we're doing a class, we're not like trying to add all of the elements of the stress on the on the arm bar right now, right? But we will see some other ways to do that arm bar, right? And you know, like we talk about overarching themes of the course, arm bar is one of those. From guard, we haven't seen it yet. We will. From the back, right? Next time we get up into some back control, right? We'll work on that. We'll we'll see some uh, some arm bar from the back, right? So we see it all over. Okay, arm bar, overarching thing, even standing, okay? So here um, we're seeing some different arm bars from mount and we'll keep looking at uh, some of those ideas as we move forward. And, it, and sometimes it'll be a review like we did today. And then sometimes it'll be a new entry. It might still be a mount arm bar, but now they're doing a different step. Now they're pushing a different direction. Okay, so that's kinda, once we learn techniques, we can learn really how to apply them. All right.